Well, I just came out here to do a little work today. I want to try to finish wiring up the two receptacle boxes that are above the 3D printer so that I can plug those two 3D printers into them. Uh, let me show you what I see here. Welcome to 3D Accuracy, where I'll talk about 3D printing, 3D product design, and 3D injection and die cast mold design. there on the floor next to the 3d printer right below where I want to work on those two receptacle boxes up there one of the shop lizards <laughs> there's two of them that I see frequently around the shop they're both the same kind I don't know what kind of lizard this is this is a little different than the uh, alligator lizards that we have around the yard it's, it has a long tail see the tail goes way underneath behind the uh, wheel on the the printer there on the roller so it's got a long tail I don't know what kind of lizard that is if anybody knows leave a comment and let me know what type it is it's it's a little different than the alligator lizard it has a longer tail little different marking on its body and they're very calm I find them in the shop. They like to come in here, I think, uh, stay away from the predators and the weather and that kind of thing. But I don't mind them being in here because they, they pick off all the insects. <laughs> you know, anything that works its way in here is a free lunch for them. Okay, anyway, so what I'm going to attempt to do I'm gonna wait a little bit see if the lizard moves they often it'll stay there and then 10 minutes later it's gone I'm gonna see if I can wire up this receptacle today those two receptacle boxes I got the little uh, well, let me see if I can walk past him here without spooking him sometimes I can sometimes I can't sometimes I'll run under the machines or go somewhere yep yeah, he turned around he's thinking about going underneath there I got the uh, these good guys uh, for using in the uh, receptacle boxes to bind all the wires together, twist all the wires together. And I had to get these larger ones because the smaller ones won't fit for a size 10 wire. This, uh, this little bit heavier wire that I have that's running through there. So I have to use these. And it says on here that they're made for uh, copper. For copper wire only see right there by my thumb it says copper wire on, only do not use on aluminum you got to be careful with that because uh, sometimes the metals are incompatible you get a little moisture in between there and then you get corrosion going on and then you lose your conductivity and that kind of stuff I tried getting some of those little uh, square flat connectors you know where you just push the wires into that I wanted to try those I hear they're pretty good and uh, they don't take up a lot of space in the receptacle box not like these they are larger but they didn't have any for the size up to a 10 gauge wire it only went up to 12 gauge wire which is a smaller smaller diameter wire so I had to buy the twist on ones instead because that's all they had so I'm like okay well let's get the job done and um, so we'll see, I'll get that one done. And then the um, uh, three phase converter is on its way here. It's in transit, uh, ready for, out for delivery. So it should be here by the end of the day today. I don't know if it'll come earlier or later, I have no idea. So once that gets here, then I can determine where to mount the panel box, uh, the three phase panel, and uh, where to put the motor. I had to go with the one larger I was looking at a 10 horsepower three-phase converter, but it won't generate enough uh, power for the 3D printer when it kicks on. So I had to go with a 15 instead. I had to bump it up, which is a larger motor. It's like 170 pounds or 150 pounds or something like that. So I'm hoping I can move it around the shop with a dolly and uh, without damaging it. and. Uh, Put it someplace over by the printer and get it wired up <laughs> then i got to look through all the instructions and read the manuals and all that good stuff first so 
Uh, I always like to do that before I start with anything so I don't mess something up not knowing, oh, don't do this until you do this other thing first, you know. You find out in the instructions after you've already messed with something and, oh, man, I hope I didn't goof it up, you know. So <laughs> I always read the instructions first. Okay, anyway, uh, well, the lizard has moved on. He's now underneath the printer or across the shop or who knows where, looking for insects. He's looking for lunch, I think. It's getting, uh, oh, yeah, it's just before noontime. All right, well, maybe I'll get a little bit done. I'll get the ladder over here anyway. <laughs> That's a good start. All right, well, as soon as I have it finished, I'll show you what I have. All finished. I have the receptacle box for the plugs that'll go from the Fortis 250 and the Connex 500 3D printers to plug them in and get electricity. Doesn't look like much, just a couple of outlets, but I'll show you anyway. Uh, there they are, up on the, almost on the ceiling. It's right next to the pole here, see? And that's what I want to do is bring the electric wire from this machine and this machine. I want to bring them right up the pole and then into the outlets there and that way it's nice and neat and tidy i don't have cords running on the floor being tripped over that kind of thing makes it a nice stuck deal those um ah uh, those little twist connectors worked okay they handled the uh the heavier gauge wire and when i had several strands it was okay um the thing I don't like about them, though, is they take up a lot of space. I would like to have tried those little slip-on uh, rectangular flat ones. I think would have done a much better job in the sense that it doesn't take up so much room. And when you've got a box with heavy wire running in it and a little bit of extra wire, you're supposed to have some extra in there in case you ever need to do any adjustments, repairs, that kind of thing you have wire to work with. Uh, it uh, gets crowded in there really fast and then trying to push all that in there. Oh, what a snug fit. <laughs> I didn't have to take the hammer to it though, so that's a good sign. I was able to get it close enough to the screw holes that I could get the screws in and then draw it in with the screws and uh, didn't have to force it. It went in, but boy, it was snug. So now, right now it's about uh, oh, 10 to 3 on a Friday afternoon and I'm just waiting for FedEx to show up with the three-phase converter and then I've got to open that up and check and make sure there was no damage and shipment and everything's fine then I'll bring it into the shop and start looking through it and maybe tomorrow maybe I'll get the panel mounted on the wall over there <laughs> that would be fun I'd love to have it wired up and ready to the point where I can uh, turn on the electric the first of course, before I even try turning on the machine, I want to uh, check the lines, make sure all the lines, I don't have any shorts or any problems, uh, so I'll do that. But I haven't done that yet until I cut this line behind me in half, because that's one loop right now, I'll go into two separate circuit breakers in the circuit breaker box on each end. Um, that way I had wire for the uh, three-phase converter for the Fortis 400, and I had a line for the air compressor that needs to go with that machine. So, I'm just waiting for the phase converter to show up. <laughs> Put away some tools. I'll do that kind of stuff until it gets here. Okay, well, when it, when it arrives, I'll show you what that looks like. Phase converter's here. <laughs> oh boy, more work to do. <laughs> Okay, check this out. I haven't even slipped it out of the box yet, but here it is. Okay, and that's about how big that panel is. So it'll go on the wall approximately from there to there and approximately, oh, yay wide or so. Uh, we'll see. I'll get it out. I got to see how it mounts and then see how close I can get to a 2x4. I'd like to at least hit one 2x4 on one side of it or the center of it or something. Um, then if I have to use drywall anchors to get the other side, I can do that. But I'd like to hit a 2x4. And here's the motor. Oh, man, let me tell you, that thing is heavy. <laughs> From what I can tell, it's sitting on that board. I don't think it's attached to it because it moved over a little bit. It's just um, 
shrink wrap to the board and then the box is underneath the board and up around the sides. So I gotta see what's the easiest way to get that out of there without killing myself because it is heavy. And it's gonna sit on the floor somewhere about here. And then what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna use this uh, pallet that it came on. I'm gonna take this pallet which is just about the right size and then I'm going to build a frame I'm gonna make a frame put the motor on the floor build a frame around it and then I can put that um, transformer on top of the frame that I build out of the 2 by 4s so I don't lose a lot of floor space I go vertical with everything and that should, it should work because I can lift up that transformer. All I got to do is get something to put it on uh, that's strong enough to hold it. And then I don't lose a lot of floor space because this is the larger one. I was thinking I was going to get to go with the 10 horsepower one, which is a little smaller. But its peak output is just below the range that the potential peak output of the Fortis 400 can do. And if when this turns on, if all the heaters come up at the same time to uh, heat anything, it could, it could flip the fuse. So we decided at the last minute, okay, let's go with a little bit bigger one, and then we know we're safe and it should work and won't have any problems. But the motor's bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and heavier and a little more expensive uh, all those plus things that <laughs> don't always like to hear so anyway it's here ah <sighs> so now and I got my boxes closed up there did I do that already did I show that on the video I don't remember I got to go back and look at what I did today anyway the boxes are closed up tight fit so tight I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you're ever in need of 3D product design, 3D injection mold design, 3D die cast mold design, or 3D printed prototypes or production parts, please feel free to contact me. You can find contact information in the video description. I look forward to hearing from you and to being of service to you. Thank you for watching. As always, I appreciate it. See you on 3D Accuracy's next video.